Hey everyone, in today's video let me discuss the eight cognitive functions. That let me let me discuss Carl Jung's eight functions. Uh, introverted intuition, extroverted intuition, introverted sensing, extroverted sensing, introverted feeling and extroverted feeling, and finally introverted feel thinking and extroverted thinking. I almost slipped up there. I want to clarify that in the Myers-Briggs universe, what people often talk about is not introverted thinking or extroverted thinking, but thinking and perceiving compared to thinking and judging. People often uh, miss uh, that a thinking function is not just introverted or extroverted, but it can also be used in a proactive, judging, linear way, or it can be used in a perceiving, adaptive, flexible way. So often when people use the Myers-Briggs versions of the cognitive functions, they are leaving Carl Jung's works, they are moving away from into a new domain, uh, a more modern theory on how the mental processes work. But still, Carl Jung's theories were not wrong. In fact, I think that uh, they offer perspectives that we so much need in today's uh, quest to understand the cognitive functions. Uh, for him, of course, the cognitive functions were divided based on if they were used in a way that was subjective, introverted, or objective, extroverted. Were they based on real objective information or were they ba based on inner sensations or feelings or thoughts that happened in your personal world related to you rather than the world around you? Beginning with introverted intuition, Introverted intuition or a subjective intuition is best described as an insight, a sense of what is going to happen, a vision of the future or a possible event. It's a way to describe or understand something abstract. It's uh, often something uh, that Carl Jung would argue was found in the depths of our unconscious. And it was, he argued that introverted intuitives were mostly driven by unconscious needs. You could say that uh, while sensing would be based on uh, what smells good, what tastes good, intuition uh, is kind of an inner craving, an inner unconscious desire made manifested by your imagination or your thoughts and uh, your creative process. Now, Compare it to extrovert intuition and you get someone who navigates themselves more on hunches or sudden awareness of patterns in the present. The extrovert intuitive gets a sudden awareness that someone is lying or that something is hidden or that something is missing from the situation. So they start thinking what is missing, what is not being said, what is hidden behind that door, what is past there. This is a more active process compared to the intuitive introverted process, which is much more uh, slow moving, steady and more based on theory and distance. Looking at introverted sensing, uh, introverted sensation is like a, se a sense or memory of something important you needed to do. Did I leave my keys at home when I left? It can be a sudden feeling that you need something or a sudden experience of a past event or a situation. It's uh, basing your decisions on memories or ex past experiences or uh, letting yourself be navigated by past sensations, past smells, past uh, sounds, things that you have heard that uh, you think could be potentially meaningful to remember for the future extroverted sensations. That's about uh, the experience of the wind, the texture of the tree, the smell of food. It can be the awareness of something important in the moment, usually something concrete and tangible. Often I would argue that someone who has developed their extroverted sensing function a lot has high nature intelligence where somebody who has developed their introverted sensing much has a high historical intelligence. You could argue that someone with high extroverted intuition has a high investigations intelligence and that someone with a high introverted intuition is, uh, has a high theoretical intelligence. Com uh, consider extroverted feeling or extroverted thinking 
Extroverted feeling, according to Carl Jung, is awareness of the interests of the people, awareness of what people are feeling, how people are doing, what's happening around you, what different people value, what different people like, what tends to be popular, what tends to be unpopular. It's uh, often being concerned with social connections, relations and bonds with people and animals. Extroverted feeling types are gifted at social interactions and interpersonal relations, and they're good at fitting in and reading people if they want to. I would argue that this is the kind of function of an actor, or at least a good function to have if you are an actor. And it leads to a higher than average interpersonal intelligence if you develop it. Introverted feeling is in many ways what Carl Jung would describe as something emotionally deep and intense. It's something that's difficult to read on the surface and often hid from the environment. It's uh, something that requires deeper introspection on yourself, a question of yourself. What do I really like? What do I want? What is important to me? It's the search for understanding about what you think is important or what you value personally. Introverted feeling, I would argue, leads to a higher than average intrapersonal intelligence, a higher awareness of what you want, what you need to be happy, what uh, is important to you. Looking at extroverted thinking, extroverted thinking is in a way what Jung would describe as pragmatism and results orientations. It's uh, about what works and what doesn't work, what you've seen gives results and what doesn't give results. Have you seen any changes? Have you seen any improvements? Have you seen how, the, how, do, how, how are things working around you? The extroverted thought is something that gives you a level of confidence or a feeling of strength and capability. Like you have an awareness of how things work and you are able to play the game, you're able to understand the game. It literally gives you confidence and a feeling that you can deal with or fix problems if they come up. It's often what I would argue that gives you a higher than average results intelligence. Introverted thinking is finally the last of Jung's functions here. It's uh, supposedly about a personal conclusion about what's logical or objective. It's a subjective system you put up with rules that make sense, that go along with each other, that explain what is rational, what's irrational, what... Uh, is objective, what's uh, not objective, what can you know, what can you deduce, what can you know for sure, how do things work, what do you know about how things work, how would you say they work, if you would it were to create a model or a replica of something, how would you build it, uh, how do you see things working inside your head. Uh, it's often based on judging what uh, and creating a good system, an internal system of what's right and wrong. The introverted thinker would want their inner life and their values to be based on reason or some form of consistent inner logic rather than personal values. And learning about all of these cognitive functions, uh, what uh, you see here, introverted thinking, uh, it gives you a higher than average analytical intelligence and the ability to create an internally valid and logical system. When learning about the uh, the different intelligences uh, about the different cognitive functions, you soon understand that this was not what uh, the functions were described as in the modern Myers-Briggs versions. It's not what you read on cognitiveprocesses.com. Cognitiveprocesses.com and Dario Nardi and other people have taken the theory different paths. They've started an uh, analyzing different patterns. When they say that an INFP has no introverted intuition, when they say that an INFJ has uh, no introverted feeling, perhaps what they are saying is something different than what Carl Jung would have said. Carl Jung himself said that he had high introverted intuition and high introverted thinking. And so you can draw a conclusion about how he saw the cognitive functions where the Myers-Briggs system said that people had one introverted function and then secondly had one extroverted function. That was not how Carl Jung saw it. He saw his first two functions as predominantly introverted. He saw himself as a predominant introvert. And that's interesting. It's uh, interesting because uh, perhaps 
um, he wouldn't agree with uh, the Myers Briggs systems and the hierarchies that state that uh, in INFJs have secondary auxiliary feeling. Perhaps he wouldn't agree with the INTJ version that states that INTJs have introverted feeling. Perhaps, and uh, this is what I argue, uh, the Jungian cognitive functions are rather about, rather about uh, what uh, what happens with your values. For example, intuition or sensing or feeling and thinking. If it is ruled by, uh, or if it comes from the inner part of yourself out, rather than if it comes from the outer part of you and goes in. What happens if you take in intuition rather than if you put out intuition? What happens if you control intuition uh, rather than if you uh, let intuition just uh, burst into ideas and possibilities? Because when people talk about extrovert intuition as idea generation, possibility orientation, noticing what's possible, noticing what you can grab and what's going to happen next, that's not what Carl Jung said. That's not what he saw as extrovert intuition. He was talking about an awareness of patterns around you, awareness of emerging possibilities. It was not necessarily that the extrovert intuitive, according to him, uh, was creative. He didn't use that word. So when they say that extrovert intuition is creative, maybe they are talking about intuitive perceiving types, where he was talking about just people that happen to be extroverted and intuitive. If so, there are other dimensions beyond the traditional modern eight cognitive functions. Maybe the eight modern cognitive functions are a completely different system than Young's system. Maybe ENFJs and ENTJs have another form of intuition that is extroverted, that separates their intuition from the INFJs that has an introverted intuition. Perhaps INFPs have an introverted intuition, and perhaps INTJs have an introverted form of thinking. But also, perhaps the INTJ has a thinking that is organized and structured like an ENTJ. Do you follow here? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because this suggests that there are 16 cognitive functions. A thinking judging, a thinking perceiving, a thinking introversion, and a thinking extroversion. And that suggests that there is so much more to learn about the personality types than we th previously thought. We have a goldmine to start digging into here. We have something to start understanding and we can finally learn something about the differences between INFJs and I ENFJs or between INFPs and INTPs. It's time to start exploring, don't you think? <laughs>